welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Government and South Africa's steel producers are said to be close to finalizing a package of measures to protect an industry that is being hit by oversupply, falling prices and cheap imports. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss what the package could mean for the industry and downstream steel consumers. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Just how bad is it in the South African steel industry at the moment? Well, I think it's pretty bleak. Uh, we've seen uh, on, on a number of fronts, you know, we've seen operational curtailments, uh, the most notable being um, Haarfeld Steel, which hasn't been in operation since July last year and has entered business rescue. And there was also some news flow uh, in the, over the last few days to suggest that the, the holistic deal that they had been hoping for, for with um, a Chinese group called International Resources Limited had fallen through on the, at by the end of January. So they're now having to go into a different phase of that business rescue. And uh, they'll be looking at selling as much as possible as going concerns or liquidating assets. So that process uh, is still in a, in a difficult phase and there's no resolution there. And then we saw the, the South Africa's largest steel producer, ArcelorMittal, putting out a trading update indicating that the, uh, the loss for 2015 was going to be sort of over 5,000 percent or 54 times uh, worse than it was in 2014, which was also a loss-making year. So it's, a, it's a, not a happy picture and we've also had uh, job cuts in, uh, from certain companies, SCORE went through restructuring. So there's been a, a lot of negativity around uh, the steel industry, which is really facing very difficult uh, market conditions, falling prices, oversupply uh, for internationally and then uh, facing these uh, the sort of tsunami of steel imports that are coming in from China. So all around it's pretty bleak. What measures are being considered to help prop up the domestic steel producers? Well, I think the package really relies, uh, uh, it has two components. From the steel uh, side, there's a, a call for greater protection um, and, and also for um, uh, having local preference when government goes about procuring steel intensive goods. And from government's side, so, uh, their leg of it is that they want reciprocity in the form of not uh, of a steel price formula that's acceptable uh, over the long term that also doesn't allow the monopoly producer to dictate, um, but saves jobs and saves the primary steel sector. So those are the sort of two uh, quid pro quos that are, uh, that are being looked at. And the, the protection side is really the, the center for that or the epicenter for that happens at ITAC. So you see the steel producers have put in a number of applications for uh, an immediate rise in the protection levels to the, the, the WTO allowed bound rate of 10%. We have already seen C three steel categories rise and there's going to be about 10 in all, I think, of uh, rising to that level and decisions are going to be made very soon on that. And then over and above that, uh, the steel companies are looking for protection, safeguard duty protection, and about five applications have gone there, which would be well above the 10% type level. And that would be to really to deal with the, uh, the flood of imports that's coming in from China in particular. <coughs> so that's, that's really the, 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 the main protective measures that are being looked at. And then obviously the steel industry also wants to be given preference when government goes out and procures uh, steel intensive goods and services or goods uh, uh, through the designation of uh, steel, local steel um, in, the, uh, in the formula that government use in, in bidding processes. So that also seems to be pretty advanced. And then we hear that there's, there's a lot of progress has been made on the pricing formula with a, a big emphasis on how can the pricing be uh, structured that um, uh, that it's, it's, it's sustainable for the primary steel sector but doesn't uh, do irreparable damage to the downstream consumers. What are the potential risks for those South African firms that consume steel? Well, I think that's where squaring that circle is going to be really the difficult part because I think a lot of progress and I think uh, the steel companies have been fast on the uptake at looking at what space they've got for protection both to the bound level and then beyond using the safeguard uh, duties. So they've been moving fairly rapidly because it is so desperate. And I don't know whether the steel consuming sectors have moved as rapidly to both look at what space there is available for greater protection for themselves, as well as to argue their case 
uh, against the, uh, maybe some of these higher uh, protective measures where it's going to really be damaging um, to, to their businesses. We know, for, uh, f for instance, that it's not just Oslo, Mittal, and Haifelt and Score that are facing distressed uh, um, conditions. The steel consuming sectors, uh, their markets have been eroded with the commodity down cycle, um, the, the weak demand generally globally. And even though we've got this benefit of the uh, weaker RAND for manufacturers or steel and engineering uh, companies, we haven't really seen that, uh, that tick uptick from the weaker RAND. And I think it's just that market conditions are very depressed, so it's hard to break in. Uh, and I uh, think there's a glut of product around. And uh, so it's not just the upstream primary producers that are facing distress. And I think that voice hasn't really been heard as well and loudly as clearly as the primary steel. And it's a r it is a real risk if prices do rise for the basic inputs, when other prices are also set to rise, especially around, around electricity, uh, and in a very depressed uh, market uh, as the as the oil companies are facing at the moment, I think we could f uh, run a real risk here, and I think uh, balancing uh, the protection uh, with an eye to protecting also those consuming uh, steel is going to be a very 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 difficult balancing act, but one that South Africa has to navigate, and I think it's about uh, hearing those voices, not just of the the big primary producers, but also of the downstream consumers. And I think that it's about those, those industries getting themselves organized as quickly as possible to try and make their case. Otherwise, I think we could see some serious casualties from this process. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.